so what a day that was it was fun you know i i saw a stat that in mike tomlin's tenure as a coach he there's only been like one weekend that games didn't matter that they were out that the Steelers were out of playoff contention it's amazing yeah that's Every, like that goes up there again with his weird like incredible statistics that i struggle to believe sometimes uh when they were two and six and three and seven it sure didn't look like his his streak of un um of losing seasons would continue but oh yeah what a, i was what a i was turnaround. right there with the rest of Steeler nation thinking like this is the one this is like he's gonna lose for the first time this is when the talk about firing him is really gonna like up and i don't know what kind of magic that man works in the locker room but <laughs> He pulled out a nine and eight record for him. Good Lord. Well, people are still mad, even though I, he I pulled that. out a nine and eight record. Yeah. Um, it's so funny. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know who this, this person was on Twitter, but basically he said, um, you ask any other team, they say Mike Tomlin's a good coach. You ask any analyst, they say Mike Tomlin's a good coach. You ask any other coach, they say Mike Tomlin's a good coach. You guys, anybody outside of the Pittsburgh Steelers organization, outside of Pittsburgh, they say he's a good coach. You ask any Steelers fan, oh, he's terrible. Fire him. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Bro. Come on. This is what, you know, I, I there, there's a couple local uh, sports talk shows um, that, that go on Sunday night. And one of them is like, well, what do you think of Tomlin? What a what an accomplishment. And they're like, oh, he sucks. Fire him. Like, yep. be, because, because, you know, nine and eight isn't good. Is that the standard? Just to, just to barely make 500? Shut up. They were in playoff contention until the final gun. Well, not I guess not the final game, but like they were in it till the last week after that start. We already, we already mentioned how abysmal that start was. And he did it with a rookie quarterback, a very, very young and unproven and still, in my mind, unproven offensive line and holes all over the defense that question marks. How good were these corners going to be? Can we finally find somebody to play next to Minka? We brought in new linebackers again. Is the D-line going to be better? And still, playoff contention, still competing. Now, I'm also a rat. I'm also reasonable. Were they going to go in and be God slayers in the playoffs and start knocking off the bills and the chiefs and at home and do make a run like that? Unlikely, but Hey, they've been to six seed before and won a super bowl on it. So, I mean, if they're getting, if they're the last one to get a ticket to the big dance, I'm still happy they got invited. So they didn't this year, but I'm happy we were at least in it till the end. It, I'm not it, one of those Mike Tomlin haters. So. Yeah, yeah, me neither. Me neither. It it, it drives me crazy. Um, the, the whole thing of would it have been better to make the playoffs or not? Obviously, you want to make the playoffs just because you have a chance. But at the mm -hmm. same time, going into Buffalo, ooh, yeah, ooh, I well, I did not like those odds. And I'm pretty. Wait, is it Miami's going to Buffalo, right? Yeah. And I just saw a thing like literally minutes before this popped up on one of the many news alert things. Two is not even cleared for like anything right now. So he's probably maybe. not going to play. Maybe he'll play. Maybe. Yeah. But, but still, that's yeah, there, there's no way. There is no way at all that yeah, Miami even is if winning. You play him. He's a stiff breeze away from being on being like in concussion protocol. Like right. That. Right. So, my, yeah. My goodness. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't even know if they, if they should even uh, uh, chance it. But yeah. Uh, but the thing is, and, and you, you alluded to this a little bit, this is a rebuilding year. Mm -hmm. We almost made the playoffs on a rebuilding year. This is how the Steelers rebuild. This is their floor. Nine yeah. and eight. This is, this is like, this is quote unquote rock bottom for the Steelers. Yes. Almost making the playoffs. Yes. And I look at that and it makes me again grateful. And it probably is because of who we played the last week of the season. It makes me really grateful to be a Steelers fan because this is what this team does. Everybody said Ben's gone. They got to rebuild. They got a young offensive line and a tested offensive line, whatever. All those things that were said. And we echoed them. And I know I echoed them because I have my questions. And then you look at a team that we played in the last week of the season in the Cleveland Browns that sold their souls to get to Sean Watson because he was going to be their savior and take them to the promised land and all that stuff. And he won like what, one, two games. 
Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the the Browns absolutely sold their soul. They yeah. will be paying Deshaun Watson, I believe, fifty million dollars for like the next, I don't know, how many years. Mm. Um, and they traded multiple first round draft picks, so they can't even replenish the roster they're 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 saddled with this giant contract and they can't do anything to to help the roster yeah. they are screwed and and you know what uh, you know this was i don't think they were expecting much this year because i mean he missed what three quarters of the season yeah true. i mean basically this basically these past few weeks have been his preseason so he'll probably be better next year but every time the steelers played deshaun watson whether he was with the browns or houston they would make him throw interceptions and make him make mistakes. So I guess we have plenty more games of Deshaun Watson interceptions to uh, look forward to. And I, I, I will look forward to this. I mean, for all, and again, I wasn't a big follower of the Texans when he was there. Like I'd see his highlight real stuff, but when he did play the Steelers, you're right. Like they would all talk up his mobility and, Oh, you got to keep him in the pocket and stuff. He like, he doesn't strike me as like a, Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes or a Lamar Jackson that's gonna like absolutely break your defense with a big run. I'll scramble for 10 yards and get out of bounds. And okay, we live to fight another down. So I'm honestly, after watching him again this year and watching him in games I was paying more attention to, he worries me a lot less than he than he worried me like as a from a player standpoint when they picked when they brought him in. I was like, oh God, we got him, we got Lamar, we got Joe. God. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is going to be impossible. I mean, he's, you know, he has like amazing physical tools. He could run, you know, he has the size, whatever, mm. but I, I, I'm not worried. I'm not worried about, uh, about the Browns, honestly, yeah. because like I said, they, they, they basically mortgaged their future for him. So mm -hmm. well, we'll hope, hope yeah, we say out. sold their souls, both metaphorically and literally. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and morally, yeah. um, yeah, so now we look forward to the off season, and in terms of needs, I, there are needs. Yeah, there are. but um, I don't think offensive line is a huge need right now. Is you know we thought the offensive line was so terrible. Oh my god, the big weakness. They actually were pretty good down the stretch. They were. It took a minute. It yeah. took a minute, but yeah, that offensive line, I think when we did like way, way back in the beginning of the season, you had me on and I kept talking about having the, off the offensive line having time to gel. And then I didn't feel like last year they really got that because of the stuff with training camp. And that this year I had more hope. I was wrong about that in the beginning of the year, but they did look significantly better, especially in the run blocking. Good God did the run blocking look so much better. Um, so I tend to agree with you. Would I turn my nose up if they took some highly touted lineman with the first pick with their first round pick? No, not at all. Worst case scenario, he gets to sit and learn for a year, and not get his knees blown out so quick. Um, but I agree. I think where you're leading with that is, yeah, there are other positions where I can I can definitely see them spending some draft capital on, specifically on the defensive side of the ball. They just paid Minka and TJ all that money. I'm hoping Cam Hayward's back next year, but we'll see. But there's two positions specifically that I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of that need addressing on the defensive side of the ball that I would right now put as a priority over the offensive line. Just right now, how I'm feeling at coming out of the season and stuff like that. What was up with Cam Hayward basically saying, <laughs> I hope I, I, he sounded like he might be dying or something like that. Like, oh, I hope I make it for it to like, like dude. <laughs> What are you talking about? I mean, I know that, but, but that is, that actually is a concern and a need. He is not young. And yes, he had a really good year. Yes, he did. He is, he's not young. He's in his good. I think God. this was his 13th season. I, I Almost 12th, 10th or 11th or, or 12th season. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I think they need. I think they need help on the defensive line. It got yep. better. The, the especially the run defense did get better. Mm -hmm. But Ogan Joby was was clutched down the stretch. Yes. I, I, I don't know what I don't know what his contract details are off the top of my head, but um but I hope he's a stealer again next year. I don't know if he was a one year signing or something like that, but uh 
yeah, I hope he's I hope he's in black and gold again next year because he played well. Yeah, yeah, I'm not exactly sure what um his contract is. Ooh, um, yeah, we'll have to I'll have to check on that. Uh, b- but yeah, they need I think they need help on the defensive line. And they're gonna need one or two inside linebackers, depending on what That's they do with one. with Miles Jack. You know whether you bring him back or not. I mean, right now, and there's a chance you won't bring him back. It might be Robert Spillane and Mark Robinson. And sorry, that ain't gonna cut it. Yeah, as much as as much as I respect Spillane for what he's done with what he's physically able to do, he's a very intelligent football player. He reads gaps really well. He's just not like. The middle linebacker position in this league is just all just the absolute like peak freak athletes. They're sideline to sideline. They're like six foot, whatever, like 200 pounds and somehow still running four fours and like all this craziness. And the Steelers haven't, and we said it ad nauseum on this podcast, on this, when I've been on this podcast, that he, we haven't had that since Shazier left. Devin Bush was supposed to be that guy. He hasn't been that guy. Let's be honest. And so That's my position. That's my biggest position of need. If there is a stud walks into camp, starts first, starts first day, middle linebacker, and I don't pay enough attention to college football to know who that is right now. But if he if he's sitting there or whatever pick the Steelers have at like somewhere in the team, mid teens somewhere, um, take him. I if they took a if they took a stud middle linebacker at that pick, I would be through the roof. Another need is cornerback. Um And uh, we're already let's get let's get them started now. Mock drafts, baby. Why not? Oh uh, yeah, I know everybody has has and, Joey Porter Jr. or something going. You know go what? Either. In this one, this is a CBS one. Joey Porter Jr. goes. He goes eighth overall. So no way. Oh, the so he's not, get, he's not getting not getting to us. Him. He's not getting I to you. Stuff when they first started doing those mock drafts back in like freaking like september or whatever like way too early mock drafts that they were going to take joey porter because right all everyone do is Ev- take a everyone players. yeah 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 <laughs> um this one actually has um them taking a cornerback mm. um so okay um actually actually we're recording this tonight i don't know if you watch other fo- college football game but look for keely ringo he may- he might go to the steelers is he tcu or georgia i'm not watching the game He's a he's um he's a he's Georgia. Okay. Basically, basically Georgia is a football factory, and every single one of those players will be drafted. Yeah, they're disgusting. They're doing Alabama level things right now. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. They're out Alabama in Alabama. So uh, roll tide, roll tide. (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cornerback is a need. Inside linebackers, and as you mentioned, Devin Mm Bush is. There's no way in hell he's coming back. No way you bring that guy He's back. Got, if they haven't handed him his walking papers already, get him, I, get him out. He, he didn't even play. I mean, he was basically replaced by Mark Robinson. My my goodness. He, yeah, I mean, Robinson is a little is a lot more downhill than Devin Bush was. Devin Bush was brought in because he was supposed to be able to be that sideline to sideline guy to cut in coverage that you don't have in Spillane or any of our other guys. But yeah, he didn't materialize into that. The other, um. The other lovely thing that's going to be so much fun with these mock drafts is they got basically another first round draft pick from the Bears, um, thirty second overall, which is which is the first pick of the second round for because of the Chase Claypool trade. Oh, that's just found money. Like it's it's good, theft. I mean, best it's of grand theft. Ar- it's grand best theft. Of if you live up to your your what you think you can do good for you but mm, that's found money right there oh boy oh boy yeah um yeah yeah that that's that is amazing so i mean mm-hmm. so they have it looks like the steelers have pick 17 then they would have i guess pick 48 or 49 in the second round but they would also have pick 32 so it's going to be lot so three picks in the top 50 yeah i like that and you could you could fill a lot of needs that way Exactly. And they can go. And the, th- the thing that fills, again, uh, is the consistency with this, te- with this organization that fills me with confidence is they have a young receiving core that doesn't need to be replenished right now because they have George Pickens, Deontay Johnson, Pat Fryermuth, uh, even Sims 
randomly coming out of nowhere to be productive in the last few games of the season. Good for him. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm confident they'll find some flyer in the sixth round that'll for some reason have 800 yards and six touchdowns next year for no good reason. Yeah. Somebody out of who cares state out. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I think they're set at wide receiver because remember, uh, basically, if you look at the, 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 the draft, the, the, the previous, the, the 2022 draft, it's amazing. Obviously, Kenny Pickett first round, George Pickens second round. Um, the, the Marvin Leal was was a uh, was a third pound round pick. He was okay towards the end. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he got he got better. Calvin Austin was was hurt, but still he's coming in next year. And there's it's like an extra draft pick. And there's your speedy guy. And there's there's something that that could be another weapon, like like hopefully like another like like like, like their own Tyree Kill or something like that. So I don't Tyree think they need Kill. To- and I hope he learns to run routes and tap his feet from Deontay Johnson, because if he can get mix those two skill sets with the speed he's supposed to have, <laughs> whoo, that's going to be fun. If he could learn to not drop it and not go backwards, he's already exceeded De- that Deontay is Johnson. That, I, was, I, said, I said to my dad in one of the games we were watching together, I was like, if he just leans the right direction, he falls for the first down, but he had to step back three yards and try to run it just to get the same amount of yardage. I was like, yeah, ah, it's infuriating. It is. Um, yeah. Um, Connor Hayward, uh, who looked awesome yesterday. Uh, he's He was a sixth round pick. And then uh, Mark, oh, Mark Robinson was a seventh round pick. I didn't, oh, wow. I yeah, didn't know he, that. Was a, um, he was a rookie. That was one of the big deals of yeah. them starting him when they did. Um, yeah. And then uh, the other seventh round pick was that Chris, that, that quarterback, which was oh, a, a dud. Um, but also not drafted, undrafted free agent, Jalen Warren, who was yeah. amazing. Woo. Man, this is an amazing draft class that, uh, that helped a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, when so, you have at least a moderate hit at each of your picks, somebody that each one of those names, with the exception of the quarterback from wherever that we cut, contributed. It, yeah. Whether they were blow the doors off or whatever, yeah, Connor Hayward, he caught that one touchdown pass. Still production, still production. Like it, you, there's there's positives at every draft pick, and that's something you don't see a lot. A lot that's of amazing. people's late round picks don't even make the team. I mean, our right. quarterback didn't, but man. right, right. Uh, we gotta see who is. Uh, they also gotta see. I I think that we have to see who they're gonna bring back. Um, and I think the big one is, um, uh, is uh Alex Highsmith. Yep. Yeah, he's the one I've been. He's the he's the one I'm seeing all the early speculation. They might extend him. It's gonna depend on how much money he thinks he wants. If he comes in there and tries to get T.J. Watt money, am eh, here's your have a good life, bud. But I hope he knows where his value is about because they just paid these, they just paid their superstars. You're not quite a superstar there, friend. I don't know. I don't, I'm not, I'm not seeing him now. Now, Ogan Joby is a, is a free agent. Uh, Ooh, so is Cam Sutton. Ooh, they better, they, they, they need yeah. to get, get him back. Yeah, that's like the only corner whose name I can remember off the top of my head. Yeah, uh, um, <laughs> Derek Watt. Oh no, we need we need to keep Derek Watt. There's like four other teams in the league to use a fullback. He'll sign back just because I loved all the, like the the randomness that I saw pop up on social media after JJ Watt was going to retire, and he's just pulling a Tom Brady so he can come play in Pittsburgh. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, um, Terrell Edmonds, uh, I, you don't like him? I don't. I thought it was either last year or the year before. I thought he had one really solid year where he figured out his coverages. He wasn't just the guy you bring up to the line when you need an extra guy to stop the run, like an extra linebacker that can kind of cover. He's a tackling machine. I don't think I've ever seen him get an interception because he can't catch with a dang. And I just, I don't think he's that consistent. I think if Fitzpatrick is Palomalu, Terrell Edmonds is no Ryan Clark in my mind. I don't think, I mean, again, if he's willing to come back on the cheap because he likes the team and he wants to like try to win a championship and he's got all the right motivation and he comes back for like a reasonable price. Okay. Bring him back. 
But if he comes in here asking for like a pay raise and I've been here for years, da, 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 eh, I'm not, I'm, I don't like him enough to keep him around for sentimentality. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think he's better than that, but yeah, I don't want to pay a lot of money. You can't, you can't, um, Minka took all the money. Sorry. This is, <laughs> we can't spend a lot of money on safeties because Minka, Minka took it all. Yeah, exactly. So he took our whole safety budget. Yeah, yeah, he took he took the safety budget. So if you want to come back, well, we'd love to have you cheap, but that's it. But they um they also have that that KZ. So maybe you know I don't know. Um, yeah, it depends on how much they like him, and it's it the off season will tell a lot. Yeah, I think. I mean, Terrell Edmonds, his contract is up, up. I assume so. Yeah, it'll it be is. interesting if he decides to if he thinks he wants to come to camp and put together tape or whatever. But I don't, I don't know. Now, technically, Alex Highsmith is not a free agent. He will be he he is still on his rookie contract for oh. 2023. He is a free agent in 2024. But usually what they do is they resign people like a year before their, their deal is done. So yeah, if they really want to keep them. Okay. If they want to keep them. Yeah, that's the mm-hmm. thing. If they want to keep them. So we'll. We'll see about that Uh, because, I mean, right now there is not a lot of cap space, but there's a million things that could happen between now and then. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. uh, Yeah. Um, So, yeah, it's it's going to. I I don't think they're they're, going to make a big splash in free agency, but. You know, they rarely who, do. You know, our who, big splash last year was Mitch Trubisky, and look how that turned out. That's true. Well, no, they got a couple of um, th- those offensive linemen too. Oh, true. That true, was man. that was big. Um, yeah. I want what's his face, Roquan Smith. I want. I wanted him with. Oh Keith. my oh, god! I wanted him so bad this season. Oh, that oh been my perfect. god! And then he went, and then of course he goes to the Ravens of all teams. We got to play him twice a year. Yeah, <laughs> but. I think he's a free agent. Yeah, I think I think all the Ravens did was say we'll take the rest of his contract. Essentially, I don't think they restructured his contract or anything. He so. is a free agent. He is a free agent. Um, and and um, yeah, he is a free agent. Uh, I'm afraid to look at his market value. It's probably he's going to be high after after what he came in and did in Baltimore. No, really, I would no. I'm was I'm I'm saying he he is going to be high. Um, but I would, I, I, I'd pay it. Um, his, Honestly, his market value they're saying is 17.4 million a year. I'd pay that. Yeah. I think I would I'd pay that. Especially if you start looking at the draft class and there's nobody you're in love with, with that first pick, or even if there is, and then you pair him with a veteran like Roquan. Oof. See, the thing is about maybe it's inside and outside linebackers. It seems like they take a while to develop. And I mean, look what we went through with Devin Bush, and yeah, that 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 was a bust. But still, I don't know. I don't know if this is a team that that needs is ready for you know let, letting a guy learn and develop. Like we might need somebody that like it. Like he's a star. You bring him in there, you could get away with a Spillane or a Miles Jack or something like that yeah. on the other side. Yes, you could. What what year is Roquan? Just like he is. He he was he was um drafted in 2018. Oh, okay. So he's still got he's, he's still got young. some mileage on him. This okay. will this will just be his second contract. I thought he was around longer than that for some reason. Yeah, yeah. So uh ooh, yeah, God, I would ooh, I would love it. The problem is, so would every other freaking team. <laughs> so does every other team. So there's gonna be a bidding war. Uh, right, right. Um yeah. I, I thought I thought it was funny. They said, you, you know, all these players always say it's like, oh, I would love to, I would love to to play for Mike Tomlin. He's such a great coach. I would love to play for Mike Tomlin. I was like, well, then why doesn't he get all these guys money? Yeah, <laughs> I would really Outside. like to, I would really like to play for Mike Tomlin, but I also like money, so I'm gonna go to the the team that's giving me more money. So. <laughs> but money pays for my lifestyle. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so uh, it's gonna be a really interesting off season but i think i think the 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 quote unquote rebuild is over i think they've been in rebuild mode for the last 2 years they had to totally rebuild the offensive line and the mm-hmm. offense that's done now they need just some final pieces and that's uh, that's really exciting yeah and i'm just i'm super happy we don't i i've never loved 
all the the hype that because the teams that they're going to focus on in this offseason are the teams that are going to be at those top picks they're going to be looking for those quarterbacks which quarterback is number one number two and that's all we're going to hear for the next couple months after the right. Super Bowl, obviously right but um like i'm happy the steelers don't get to be involved in that this year like they were definitely involved last year obviously he's been retired but i'm happy that kenny came in and especially in those last few games kind of silenced a few people yeah not crazy numbers but he didn't have a crazy like he didn't have like a crazy in place offense. It kind of was a work in progress, kind of learning as you go. And I mixed feelings on Matt Canada, but um, I don't know that the play calling was always there to best support Kenny. So that's the big question. Yeah. Do they bring back Matt Canada? And yeah. what I mean, the offense didn't improve. Kenny improved, you know. You know, two, 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 two weeks in a row, he had, you know, last minute uh, um, game winning drives, which is. Which and is even amazing. in the Browns game, that, that, that tossed the pickets. I mean, it was wide open, but it was just, it was right. It was a dime. It was right on. Uh, he made some really good throws. Makes, yeah, yeah. He can make the throws. And that's, and that was the big thing. All the stuff about his hands and he gripped the ball. All that. Bleh. I think he, I think he put that to bed. He made some and pretty loved, throws. I, what? Yeah. He made some pretty throws. And I just love, love, love having a mobile quarterback again. Like he's not a Lamar Jackson where he's going to burn you with his legs, but he's quick enough to, he does, he loves that big spin, that big Russell Wilson spin that he used yeah. to do back in Seattle and whatever, man, if it gives you more time in the pocket to make those dart, those little dart throws you need to, I'm good. I'm good with that. Watching Ben stand there like a statue for the last few years of his career was not necessarily a fun time for me it was it was it was really frustrating it was really frustrating to tomlin also because he kept saying all the time quarterback mobility quarterback mobility i think it was driving him nuts too and now he has a somewhat mobile quarterback that can you know just run out and sometimes they just just designed runs and just go out and hey go run for 10 yards and get that first down so yeah i wouldn't mind seeing them put some like is his i think the run game established itself enough that People will be looking for it a little bit next year. I would love to see a few like of the Jalen Hurts style RPS and just have Kenny keep one for no like uh, yeah, most of them sure. are handouts, but have Kenny keep one. <laughs> sure. Why not? I mean, uh, I've seen I've seen Jalen Hurts run the, 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 like like it was like there was nobody in, in nobody near him for 20 yards because you know yeah. his his passing was so uh effective. So yeah. So I wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind seeing some seeing the, some of those implemented in the offseason. Yeah, I Again, I don't know about Matt Canada. I I don't know, man. I I, know. Let the, I'm gonna let I'm gonna defer to the Steelers management on that one and kind of just go with whatever decision they decide. But I know yeah, there will um, be people that'll be thrilled he's gone and people that'll be like, oh, you should give him another shot. But yeah. th- there is a rumor that basically he was told you gotta don't don't give Kenny too much. Oh, dumb it um, down. Well, yeah, dumb it down or just limit the playbook or whatever. So that's why that. the 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 <laughs> it looked like the, the the playbook looked really limited. I could see that. I mean, he is a rookie. Um, so maybe you know, in his second year, he could do something. You know, make it expand the playbook a little bit. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, some of the things I hear is you know, what the heck are you doing? He's the worst offensive coordinator ever. And some of the things it's like, well, it's, it's not really his fault. You know, the, the, the plays are there, the people, the players don't just make them. So I don't know. And that's, that's the tricky part when navigating like Steelers fan. And we talked about it before earlier where everybody's calling for Mike Tomlin's head. And then he somehow manages magically pulls out a winning almost playoff making season. Uh, and there are a little, those voices are, sl- are a little quieter now. So the Pittsburgh fandom is not forgiving. So I would imagine it's probably like 75 for get rid of him and about 25, like, yeah, maybe, but nobody's really excited for Matt Canada to come back next year. So in my life, there's been like one offensive coordinator that the fans liked. And Bruce Arian? I think so. Yeah, probably. That that's it. I, I thought I think Ken Wisenhunt had a had a had a good run there for a yeah. minute, but he was Look also for a minute, Bruce yeah. Arians like understudy. Yeah. So. Yeah. Other than that, every other offensive coordinator is the dumbest person that, that needs to go. Yep. Um 
this isn't just a Steelers problem. <laughs> There's yeah. a lot of dumb offensive coordinators out there. Uh, the uh, the coach of the Browns, who's supposed to Savansky, who's supposed to be a genius, mm. is dumb enough to not let the best running back in the league, who is like awesome every single time he touches the ball, limits to him to like 10 or 11 or 12 carries. Yeah, don't that's get that criminal. Don't get that. He's, there's literally, I, I think there's shirts that literally say Kev, Kevin, let him run or something like that. I mean, nice. he, he's just, he's, you know, it's, 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 you know, there's, there's lots of fan bases that want to get rid of their offense coordinators. Um, so it's, this isn't just a Steeler specific problem, but uh, yeah, I mean, in this, in, in the league we're in today where you got the chiefs and like those types of offenses putting up 35 a game. It's tough when your offense is, yay, we scored 28 for the first time in the last game of the season. It's tough. I get it. But like also the Steelers are the Steelers are offense is built a little differently than those offenses. It just is. So Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean, there's a lot of promise. I mean, Najee looked amazing the second half of the season. The offensive line did a lot better job, you know, run blocking. So mm-hmm. there is there is promise there. The offense is is looking better, but yeah, um, more than seventeen points a game would be nice. <laughs> yeah, let's bump that number up a bit, a little bit. I mean, if they scored, let's say, twenty points a game, they're winning 10, 11 games. So you know, yeah, yeah I mean, put twenty points on the scoreboard for most of the games this year. Yeah, yeah. You're, <laughs> minus you're, like you're the not, builds. You're not worrying about. The 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 uh, the Jets third string quarterback to 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 win your game for you so you can make the playoffs. So, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, the other another thing is who is going to be Kenny Pickett's backup? Because I'm pretty I know I know it's not Mason Rudolph, and I'm pretty sure Mitch Trubisky is gone too. Trubisky wants out. That all one of the one of the things I see pop up all over the place is like Trubisky regrets coming to pittsburgh so soon at in free agency or something i'm like why yeah you might, maybe you get a couple a little bit more money but you clearly weren't going to play up to it so mitch uh we've traced the call it's coming from inside the house <laughs> the problem isn't the other teams the problem is you bro um he had his chance I don't want to hear this crap, Mr. Trubisky. He had his chance. The reason why he didn't get much of a chance is because he looked so bad those first few games. Yeah, and I, I was one of I was one of the advocates in the beginning of the season. Like you have to let Mitch start and see what he does because you can't start. You couldn't start Kenny and then bench him and then put Mitch in and then bench him and then try to bring Kenny back. Like that wouldn't work for anybody. But I also was like, give him a short leash, and they did. So. I, I I think as good as you could have managed that quarterback situation, I think the Steelers did. I didn't agree with people who were saying throw Kenny in the fire from day one and let him try to swim. Like I didn't think that was I didn't think that was good for him. I, I, I think it's a bad. I think that would have been a bad idea. And yeah, you know, so, well, if, if if Kenny started to begin, no, I think I think this offense was just so broken and so mm-hmm. bad that I mean. Not that not that Trubisky, you know, helped the situation, but that that offensive line, it eventually got good or or better, but it yeah. started bad. And we knew it yeah. was gonna start bad, but still, ugh, we didn't think it would be that bad. Yeah, and you don't want to put your rookie quarterback behind that kind of offensive line and have him get used to just being hit all the time. Then or dance, he, or, or scrambling around, or running around like crazy. Every yeah, because then he starts to get the itchy trigger finger, right, or right, like right. making bad throws because he's afraid he's going to get hit. And so, like, say what you will about the season, could it have been better? Yes, but different decisions have been made. Yes, but again, hindsight is always twenty twenty. You can go back and be a great like, uh, what, what's the term, like armchair head coach or something like that on Monday mornings every week, and tell me how much better you would have called that game than Mike Tomlin, but. In reality, he has the job for a reason, and I don't. So I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. I don't know how many quarter, how many um, coaches that were that that had that were at, at two and six and three and seven recover and go nine and eight. Yeah. Uh, Look at the coach of the Broncos. They started off bad. Look, he got fired. Uh, lots of coaches. They 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 mm-hmm. 
they they don't recover from that. And it's not just a coaching thing, but still he he never loses the room and they love him and they play mm-hmm. hard for him. That's what you want. That's all you want from a coach. I yeah. don't understand these people like, well, Thomas should be fired and bring it someone else. Who? Who is this magical coach that will make everything wonderful magically better? Yeah. Who? I, I- to every to every Steelers fan that that says that, I'm like, go study your history, my friend. Like, yeah, Chuck Noll, four Super Bowls, greatest coach ever. Yada yada yada. Say what you will. Chuck Cole was a great coach. Chuck Cole had some bad. Chuck Cole had some bad seasons. Bill Cowher, iconic coach in Pittsburgh, won us a Super Bowl. People were calling for his head too. Like, calm down. I know trust the process is such a cliche phrase right now, but trust the process a little bit. This organization knows what it's doing. That's why we get to be this consistently good. Chuck and was bad the entire <laughs> decade of the eighties. All right. I lived through it. I, 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 that was my formative years and I lived through <laughs> bad eighties Steelers teams. Um, Bill Cower. Yes. A good coach. And yes, he won playoff games, but then he would lose playoff games with with massive amounts of talent. So he was no he was no perfect. Uh, he was no angel either. Yeah. Uh, who who is this magical coach that would have that, that would have made this team better? I don't I don't know. I would be curious, and I don't know if you have anybody that runs in these circles because I'm not like I don't know any Baltimore Ravens fans that closely. Um, like whichever Harbaugh's over there coaching them and not in Michigan. He's been around almost as long as Tomlin has, and he ain't won a Super Bowl in a dog's age. So are Ravens fans, like, calling for his head, too? Like, is this a thing that happens everywhere, or is this just, like, a uniquely Pittsburgh thing that we're just, Bill like, Bel- out in the Super Bowl this year? Fire him. Bill Belichick hasn't won a playoff game in four years. Well, you want to fire him, too? Hey. Huh? Yeah, yeah. What have, what, have the, what have the Ravens done lately? Don't. Just, just well, stop. they're in the playoffs, so we can't be – we can't we, – we can't, we can't do that yet, but <laughs> – Oh, the Ravens aren't doing much in the playoffs. They're not. I they're not. I mean, it, it, the, the the same things we said about Tua, we're saying about Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson, we don't even know if he's going to play. I don't know if he's going to want to play because you know he has a contract issue. So mm-hmm. that, that could get that could get ugly. Uh, That's going to be very very interesting to watch this off season. Oh, I mean. The the conventional wisdom is that they can't work out a contract. They'll just franchise tag them. Okay. But that could get real bitter. That could, I think there's a chance we might not see Lamar Jackson in Baltimore anymore. I wouldn't be surprised. And honestly, and not to, not to knock Lamar Jackson, this goes for all quarterbacks with his playing style. They have a very limited shelf life because of the way he plays. Like injuries abound. He's gotten better as a passer. I know I've been one of the ones that has like knocked his passing game, but he's gotten better as a passer. But he's a his primary his primary threat is his legs, and those are going to go eventually. So and sooner rather than later. So he's got a he's got a short shelf life. If I'm the Baltimore Ravens, I'm almost seeing what I like test in the water, see what you can get for him at this point because this is like his peak almost not i guess it's not his mvp he year, basically but. is in his prime and they need to do something because basically uh basically it's lamar a, a really good running attack and mark andrews and that's their entire offense they have yeah. no wide receivers Deshaun jackson to- was a starting receiver for this team this season and that makes yeah. no sense to my mind yeah and he's he's 73 years old yeah. um you know, there it was like when 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 Lamar Jackson you know first started, and there was that 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 running attack that was so unique that nobody was doing anything like that. It just t- took the world by storm. But now everybody's used to it. It's like mm-hmm. you need to do more than just run, and you need. I mean, they did draft a wide receiver, and he got hurt. It's not you know it happens, but still, you need more. You need some wide receivers. You need an actual passing attack. Help the dude out. And now, regardless of what happens, whether whether the contract works out or not, they're going to have to now pay Lamar Jackson tons of money, 40, 50 million dollars. You know, you know, that Deshaun Watson deal didn't just hurt the Browns. That hurts everybody because now everybody's every quarterback's like, yeah, I want that contract. 
I you, want, wait, you say I can make that? What kind of money? All right, I want that deal. I want, I want, <laughs> I want, I want as much as that dude. And I never did anything with no massage people. So give me my okay. money. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so, so that's 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 going to be really interesting. Yeah, um, I I, th- I think the off season is going to be fascinating. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to end up somewhere, probably like the Jets or something like that. Ooh. Um, That'll be interesting. That'll be interesting. He he'll either retire or go or go somewhere else. But I don't. Think I don't think that. Him. I don't think he's ready to retire. I think honestly, I just think he wants he wants to get another ring, and he's frustrated that he hasn't yet. So, I uh, yeah, I maybe he, maybe he's the maybe he's the latest victim of the Indianapolis Colts. Although I've heard Derek Carr is, is going there. So. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They'll they'll get. Yeah. The, the Colts will get some. Maybe maybe they'll bring back Ben Roethlisberger or something like that. Maybe Ben Roethlisberger will be the the uh, the 2023 uh, Colts starting quarterback. I don't know. It's just yeah, I don't I don't know what the heck they're doing. They're they're basically like Andrew like broke them basically. I know. I think he did. I think he broke more than like just that. Just the team he was on. I think he broke like the soul of that team, like that he organization. Did. He <laughs> did because basically basically ever since they've just been chasing chasing that high. It's like we want our next Andrew Luck. And, uh, oh no, no Bill Rivers ain't it. Matt yeah, Ryan Phil Rivers ain't it. it. Matt Ryan sure ain't it. Um, oh, God, yeah, Matt so Ryan. yeah, they could, they'll they'll get some. Thing. Yeah, I I think it's gonna be really interesting. And then you know all kinds of there's always all, all kinds of surprises out there. Um, yeah. So and we're still not even talking about who's who's gonna be the one to win it all this year and what's gonna happen to those players because those players will be high dra- high trade capital and all that stuff I, so I, I you know what i think the nfc championship is going to be eagles 49ers and i am so excited for that i think that's going to be so cool and then yeah the afc it's either going to be the bills the chiefs or the um or the or the Bengals, and that's going to be an amazing I, I, I can't wait for these playoffs oh yeah i'm very excited once we get to like the championship rounds these wild cards, I mean, unless somebody pulls some tr- magic trickeration out of their hat, like I think they're pretty set. But this uh, this th- this wild card weekend is basically just to weed out the crap. Like, like every week, every year, the, the first week of the playoffs is like, okay, congratulations, you made the playoffs. You're gonna get slaughtered. Let's move on. So yeah, yeah it's it's the, it's the week after that. That's the, the really good football. So welcome to the playoff preseason. There's the door. <laughs> Congratulations, Jaguars! You made the playoffs. Now, please leave. No, they play, but don't the Jaguars with the division winner? So they play. Um, they host against, and they're playing the Chargers, which I think is going to be a really good game. game though. That's the only I, one I'm excited for. I think that's going to be really good, but I also think the Chargers are just way too talented to. I think, but but the Jaguars are always. They're always they're always Trevor in it. Lawrence has put together a sneakily good season this year, so. I, he's he's on his way so it's uh i'm i yeah yeah i it's I, i'm i'm excited um but yeah i think there's there's also going to be some you know um i think there might be some upsets i think i think the uh i think the, the cowboys are going to lose to the to, the, to uh, tom brady which is going to be hilarious all right this might be the one and only time in my life you catch me rooting for the cowboys because i heard some sportscaster put it out a while back it's like tom brady is going to sneak in and win this garbage division and then go on a run and get to the Super Bowl again. Oh, and I'm like, please, can for the love totally, of God, do not do that. Do I can do that totally to that see ego. that. Oh, I could totally see that. I could totally you see that man's ego any bigger. Than oh, it my are. God. If if I if I have to watch Tom Brady in another Super Bowl, I'm just going to I might I might skip that one. I might just just yeah. watch for the commercials and just leave the room or something like that. Oh, no, no. Come on. Come on. Haven't we suffered enough? Seriously. Come on, we we don't need we don't need Tom Brady and yet another Super Bowl. Come on, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I think it'll be interesting if the top if the teams that are supposed to make it that far to the championship games make it. It's going to be some really good football to watch. It's going to be fun. It's going to mm-hmm. be fun. All right, sir. Um, great talking to you. It's been a while. It has it has been it has been a minute. But uh, you got all you got a lot of Pittsburgh people that need to come on these talks sometimes. So I understand. that's right. That's right. That's okay. That's okay. Hey, well, you can you can you're you're welcome anytime. So uh all right, all right sir. Hey, I'll see you. Yeah, take care.